Hello, it is Monday, April 17th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle today, which means we should have a nice, relatively gentle, approachable, themed solve just to kick off the solving week. And this hopefully gentle and approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Matt R., Tom Nemchek, Alan Blunder, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support, bringing us this series, sustaining this channel, keeping this whole thing going. I really do appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve, or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And as a benefactor like those five, you can get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. And of course, as a patron at any level, you get access to all of the bonus videos that have got up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And yesterday that included the most recent New York Times monthly bonus puzzle. So that was themed around the concept of the month of the military child, which was not something with which I was familiar. Um, but that was the the sort of vague theme around which the puzzle was, was themed this month. Uh, so enjoy that if you're a patron. And uh, thank you if you are. Thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. Um, thank you also if you've joined the Daily Solve Discord chat server. That's a nice friendly chat community, and you can join that in the link in the description field as well. And uh, thank you if you've subscribed to the YouTube channel. That's a big help. Um, please do so if you've been watching these videos and have not, not gotten around to it just yet. Uh, all right, so let's get on to today's crossword. This is a collaboration by Catherine Baker, for whom this is a debut construction, and Scott Earle, who's constructed around half a dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see what these two have in store for us today. Flavor of yellow Skittles. I assume it's lemon. I don't know that people really... Can you really determine the... I guess they probably taste different. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I assume the yellow ones are, are lemon-flavored. Scottish girl could be a lass. Make less wordy say is to edit something down. One of 26.2 in a marathon. That's the number of miles in a marathon. I never quite remember exactly what that is. I always... it's. A, I, I think I generally remember it's 26, but probably sometimes I think 26.4. Who knows? Anyway, this is the answer. Final movement of Beethoven's ninth. Final movement of Beethoven's ninth. I mean, it's a, it's it's choral in the sense that it's the final movement movement of Beethoven's ninth symphony is a is a choral work, which is unusual for a symphony. I think might have been unheard of for a symphony at that time. But I'm not sure what this is looking for. Oh, well, it might be looking for the actual name. So Ode to Joy, the Ode to Joy is the sort of famous choral, you know, um, passage in that comprises the, most of that movement, or the end of the movement anyway. Um, I guess it's the whole thing, the whole movement is called that. I actually don't know. In any case, you'd know it if you heard it, um, if you don't already, just by hearing that phrase, Ode to Joy. The end of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And Mum's Mum is a nan, a grandmother. Uh, shoe brand with a three-stripe logo is Adidas. And the cold shoulder is the silent treatment. All right, so here, this looks like a thematic answer, and it's already filled in, and I don't see anything unusual about it. So what we'll have to figure out, maybe should I look at the revealer? Maybe I will. Why not? Let's see what it says. This says, I can't even, or a hint to the answers to the starred clues. So, I can't even, silent treatment. Does it just mean lack of response? Is that all that's going on there? Easy listening background tunes. Elevator music? I can't even. What does that mean? Is this actually the answer? I'm not sure. Let's check some crosses here. Teller of tall tales is a liar. Okay, that's a good start. Oh, come on. Be reasonable or something like that. Be something. Um, eggs and Caesar's salad. Ova? Oh, because it's because it's Latin. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, I was wondering why is it Ova? And it's of course that's what Caesar is getting at there. Um, that's often the case in a clue. When you see 
sometimes a clue needs to be in another language or a borrowed, it could be an English word if it's a borrowed word from another language, such as in this case. Um, and often there will be a hint to that with a location or a name or something like that. It gives you a clue. What causes dough to expand and rise is yeast. Sign of things to come is an omen. Like some decals. Some decals are ironed on, maybe. Castle protector, a moat. And fighting sport for short, MMA, mixed martial arts, I know of that. Um, announcement upon arrival, I'm here, you might announce. So this elevator music looks perfectly correct. And I don't understand the theme. I, I, maybe I will after I see the answer to that clue. Excludes could be shuts out, maybe. You exclude somebody from something, shut them out from it. What, an out, what a crossing guard's outstretched arm means. Stop, I suppose. The crossing guard is putting out their arm to indicate stop. Donut shapes are... Uh, Tori, so tor plural of Taurus. And oil price regulating group is OPEC, the uh, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. From A to Z is a common, common phrase. And if one participates in some singles matches, speed dates? As in an event for singles, I'm only thinking speed because of this E here. I'm not quite sure why, why it's speed dates. I guess singles matches. I guess some, some singles matches, more than one. So a speed dating event is sort of, I guess you're, ma you know, you're matched with multiple people. At least that's how it's portrayed in sort of sitcoms and things. I, uh, source of maple syrup is sap from a tree. A maple tree, I guess. And Chip Blank, Beauty, Beauty and the Beast teacup. Um, I remember the, I remember the character, the little little chipped teacup, but I don't. I didn't even realize they had a, a surname. Chip Peter, I don't know. Petri Schwarzenegger to pals could be known as Arnie, Arnie Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course. And then in, if you're in favor of something, you're pro it. Oh, Potts, right, of course, because the Angela Lansbury character was uh, Mrs. Potts, and so Chip Potts, of course, that makes sense. Uh, understand now, see it, you may ask. And Israeli leader Golda Meir, um, and then optimists can find them in any situation, upsides, I suppose. Start of a hypothetical could be, let's say, let's say this is the case. Let's just say, hypothetically, pinnacle could be the acme, the top of a peak or something. Group for docs could be, I think, the American Medical Association doctors group in the U.S. And docs being a contracted form of doctors also suggests the answer will be abbreviated, as we can see it is. Something a convenience store sells in bags. Ice something? Ice? You can get bagged crushed ice or ice cubes, I suppose. There we go. Oops. Uh, you can get that from convenience stores. So there we go. Part of a rotary telephone is a dial uh, on which you would dial the number, and of course, from which we receive, we, we derive the concept of dialing a telephone number, even though we don't do it on a dial anymore. Bar game projectile is a dart, a common bar game, and university military program is ROTC, uh, which is something like Reserve Officers Training Corps, maybe. And of course, as with the AMA, a university being abbreviated indicates an abbreviation in the answer as well. Kind of bag that may hold swag. Nice rhyme there. Uh, a tote bag maybe could hold sort of free merchandise that's given out at a convention or something like that. And success in pitching or bowling is a strike. Um, so if you're, I suppose, right, if you're a baseball pitcher or if you're bowling in a bowling alley, a strike would be a good outcome. Uh, and they mean different things. I wonder if the if the derivation is the same. Anyway, uh, fail to include is to omit something. Cambridge University. Um, oh right, so this doesn't mean this. Sorry, this isn't referring to Cambridge University here in the UK. It's referring to a university in the town of Cambridge in Massachusetts, which is why university is not capitalized. That's that's crucial there. So in this case, it's referring to MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, 
uh, just like Harvard University and actually several other universities. Uh, textures options for sending faces and symbols. Something board, a, an emoji board or something? Oh, something, oh, an emoji keyboard, right, of course. Okay, there we go, emoji keyboard. So I don't understand this theme at all. I feel, I feel very much behind the curve on this puzzle. What's going on? I don't know. We'll get there eventually. Sorry if you're if you've jumped to the solution of that, and I just don't I'm lagging behind. Wrigley as a fish could be Ely, so Ely referring to the properties of an eel, I suppose. And then a professional office seeker informally is a poll, a politico, a politician. Uh, road trip expense could be gas. You could expect you could submit gas to be reimbursed on a business trip. To wander off course is to go abroad. It's not really off course, is it? To go a field, maybe? I don't know. Some baby noises. Babies are often said to coo, so that could work. Oh, come on. Not sure. Small houses in Spain. Probably ends with an S. Wander off course. Go ashore off course if you're not on course at sea. I don't know. Go stray. That's better. Wander off course, which could, and then go, go, to go stray could be either literally or metaphorically going off course. There we go. At that time, then this happened. It happened at that time. And birds in a coop, hens, a hen, chicken coop, hens in a chicken coop. Actor Alda or Arkin, Alan Alda or Alan Arkin. And of course, as an or clue, this is only referring to one of these Alans. So a single Alan, actor Al Alda or actor Arkin. Big name in potato chips, Lay's is a common potato chips, Walker being the equivalent here in the UK, in the same way as Allah, so sort of in the style of, um, from the French for to the, I suppose, which is all, I mean, it's often used in French in the same manner, I guess, as well. And oh, come on, is, what is this? Is this not coups? I really want it to be. I'll leave it for now and we'll, we'll see. Um, prize for best original score, e.g. That, that's an example of an Academy Award, an Oscar. Oh, this is get real. Oh, it's not scoos. It's goose as in goo goo gaga, another sort of stereotypical baby noise. So um, get real is oh, come on. And uh, terra firma, terra incognita, terra... What terra? There's so many terras. <laughs> um, let's see. What about this? Small houses in fame. Casitas. Um, I mean, casa is house, and ita is a diminutive. So, there. I wouldn't be surprised if there are casitas, which are small houses. Let's say that's the answer. And then terra. I still don't see it. Gray in the face could be ashen. You have an ashen visage, visage sort of pale face. Start of a countdown. Could be 10, counting down from 10 would be common. And a picnic pest could be an ant. So terra costa, coastline? I can't even share a, oh no, terracotta, terracotta, of course, the material. There we go, sorry about that, that was ridiculous. Anyway, I can't even, there are no words. Oh, iron, some decals are iron on. So iron disposes technically accurate, but iron on is a better answer. I, you describe it as an iron on decal. And so there aren't, there are no words. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. I, <laughs> my suspicion with silent treatment was sort of correct about no words, but I wasn't thinking about it in the proper manner. Um, and it didn't occur to me how that applies to an emoji keyboard or elevator music. Very clever. There are no words in silent treatment because you intentionally withhold the words. There are no words in the emoji keyboard because it only consists of pictorial uh, icons, and then there are no words in elevator music because that is non-lyrical music, sort of music, that kind of music. All right, is before, is was, past tense of is. Car sickness feeling is nausea. Weasel relative, a stoat could be related to a weasel, that looks likely. Uh, approximately is or so, fi approximately five, five or so. Brainstorming product is an idea. Hurdle for a future Esquire is the LSAT, the law school 
aptitude test or admit admissions test, I think maybe. Gardener's bag full is soil. And to indicate is to denote something. Um, Dutch cheese is Edom. And no more than is mere. So no more than a few, a mere few. Like those interested in poetry or painting, you could, they could be described as arty. And if one is following a trail as a bloodhound, one is on the scent. So one has not gone astray. And then here we have, I'm not impressed, which is meh. And there we go. That was the Monday crossword. We finally, it took me until uh, essentially the end of, almost the end of the solve to understand what was going on with this revealer. And the revealer, of course, is the explanatory answer that is often, but not always, found towards the end of the crossword. As predicted by Lyle's Law, uh, it tends to be found in the across answers towards the end of the crosswords, and even more particularly, very often, three cells north of the southern border, and generally abutting the eastern border. But it need not be any of these things. But that is very common. And uh, it sort of explains what's going on with the theme, as it does in this case. There are no words in the silent treatment, an emoji keyboard, or elevator music. Very clever. And I, for some reason, just didn't catch on to that. <laughs> Let me know if you did and when. I'm always curious to know. And let's move on. Let's see. I think I do have time. Let's move on to a few clues from yesterday's puzzle, which I, which I earmarked. Um, I don't know if I grabbed all of them, but I grabbed several that uh, seemed important because I said things that were incomplete or incorrect. So first off from Spikel Thing points out, this is uh, regarding um, the clue that was vertically level and the the answer was plum, which for some reason I just completely blanked on. And Spikel Thing says a plum line or plum bob is a piece of string with a weight on the end of it. This can be used to check if something is vertical. It can also be used to measure the depth of water. Typically, the weight at the end was made of lead, and as plumbum is Latin for lead, it gives us the word for plumber, plumbob, and the PB symbol in chemistry. And then Telenostic points out that in this particular puzzle, plum is being used as an adjective, meaning literally vertically level. So you could say this shaft is plum, it's vertically level. And for some reason, I just didn't, I just completely blanked on what was actually going on when I referred to plumbing the depths. Um, I didn't really think to connect that back to the actual action itself and what it results in determining. So thank you to Spikel Thing and Telegnostic for that. Uh, Stephen Giblin explains that Omaha is a form of Hold'em poker, which in which each player gets four cards instead of just two, as in Texas Hold'em. And then uh, Stephen goes on to explain the details about the game, including that there are two variations of it. Uh, let's see. Thor Christensen observes that Sue Grafton's alphabet series of sort of letter-based murder <laughs> titles uh, made it to Y. She was going to write a Z novel but died before she was able to. And then Thor Christensen also explains that emeralds are the rarest ore to find in Minecraft, as clued in yesterday's puzzle, partially due to the fact that they only ever appear one at a time, whereas other resources appear in veins. I see. So have to really luck out, I suppose. Brian Spurrier uh, explains that Polly became the go-to parrot name after the character Sir Paul in Ben Jonson's play Volpone, a man in Venice who didn't speak Italian and just repeated whatever was said to him. The cracker thing, as in Polly wants a cracker or Polly want a cracker, is harder to pin down. The earliest references in the, in the 1800s, including the saltine ads, seem to be referencing an existing joke, so I guess it was just a common enough annoyance of parrot owners that people started joking about it. Also, finally, with respect to nerf, meaning to, I don't remember exactly what the clue was, but something like disempower in video game lingo, nerf originally came from the game Ultima Online. Uh, players said their weakened weapons felt like fighting with nerf blasters. There we go. I didn't know that origin. And finally, Brian has a good observation that entirely eluded me regarding the theme, which was that for the theme answers on the right side of the grid, we're taking away the space from an existing phrase. So the sort of A word, we re remove the space and make a single word. And for the theme answers on the left, we're adding a space to the original phrase. In other words, we're sort of separating out the A. Very good. I absolutely didn't notice that. Thank you for observing that. It adds a nice bit of uh, elegance and, and continuity to the puzzle. 
All right. Those are the, the clues I, I pulled out. Thank you to everybody who left them, as always. And thank you to you for watching to the end of the video. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Tuesday crossword with just the slightest step up in difficulty. Maybe. We'll have to see. Uh, well, you'll see if you come back and find out. I hope you do. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.